Hello, I'm Jennifer Johnson with Whispering Pines Shetland Sheep Farm. My husband and I raise a flock of beautiful Shetland sheep here on our farm in western New York. And I'm also an authorized Magicraft dealer. And my strategy with my dealership is to make sure I have all the wheels and the fiber prep and spares and accessories in inventory here in my shop in western New York. And I think I do this because I feel like a hand spinner, when they're inspired to do something, they shouldn't have to wait six to eight weeks for an item to come in from the factory in New Zealand. I wanna make sure that they get the material they need in their hands as quickly as possible. So that's my strategy. And today I'm making a video on assembling one of the wheels in the Magicraft product line, which is the Suzy. So I've already unboxed it and I have all of the components out here to um, start working on putting it together. So let's just dig into it. So the first thing I'm gonna do, I have the manual open. This came with the, uh, the wheel. So I've, I've read through that already. And I went and I got myself a Phillips head screwdriver, which is one of the tools you're gonna need for assembling it, and some Vaseline, just regular old Vaseline, which I'm gonna use at some point in the assembly for lubricating the, the bobbin shaft. All right, so the first thing I'm gonna do, I've got all the parts out and sitting out here. Some of them I'm not gonna need for the assembly, so I'm gonna set those aside to make more room for myself. So I'm gonna take these four standard bobbins and set them up there. I don't need those right now. I don't need the um, Delta Flyer right away, so I'm gonna set that, I'll put that in this bit of yarn here, nice and soft. I'm not gonna need the spinning head, so I'll put that in this bin of yarn. And I'm not gonna need the whorl right away either. Set that aside. I'll put the con rods over there. Okay. I'm also gonna empty out the contents of the bag with all of the parts that come with the wheel. So these are the two um, rods that you're gonna use for the bobbin holder. That's gonna be a fun thing. Here's our green drive band. It comes with one drive band. Uh, your Allen tools, they've got three Allen wrenches that come in this tool kit, parts kit. And the hardware, all your fasteners. Wood screws, bolts, etc. Keep those right handy. One thing you're going to notice is I'm, I'm using some hides, some sheep hides, as uh, just a way to keep my different parts from getting scratched as I'm working through the assembly. So you probably should put like a soft cloth, a blanket or something down on your work surface. I'm also going to strongly recommend that you clear a space so you can stand up while you're assembling. Assembling on the floor, just it's just a lot easier to be standing up. You've got a lot more leverage when you're doing the assembly. The first step in on the assembly is you have to install the bolt that's going to um, create the stop to prevent your handle from going too far when you shift it right to left so that you don't damage your spinning head. So what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to remove the nut from the stem assembly and then lift this stem assembly away from the drive wheel. Now there's a star washer here that you want to make sure that stays with the drive wheel. You want to make sure there's there's one side that's like grabby. It's got the sharp edges. The other side is kind of rounded. You want the grabby side facing, you can feel it. There's like a, a sharpness to it. You want that set up on the drive wheel so that when you put it back together, the grabbiness will be grabbing this rubber washer on the stem assembly. So if you get those mixed up, let's just make sure you do that. Okay, then we're gonna set this aside. Now, on the back side, where there's no clematis, there's a little hole for a JCB bolt. So you're gonna turn your stem and your handle to a right angle like this. And then you're gonna take the shortest bolt that you have in your collection here. There's only one of them. And that's what's gonna go in this threaded hole here. And you're gonna use the 
Allen wrench that's supplied to install that. Again, this is just sort of to prevent, it's like a stop to prevent your handle from going too far and that will result in damaging your head potentially. Now we're going to put that back on the wheel. And you'll see after the, uh, after we get it assembled, you'll see how the handle actually stops because that um, bolt is in the groove. And then we're just going to put the nut back on. Now, if, you, if the nut continues to spin, you've set your star washer incorrectly, so you're going to want to flip it around. But if the nut stops, that's good. That's how you want it. All right, so next thing. So I've already taken the cellophane off of my base where your treadles are. And in the base, you can see there's two holes on either side. All right. What you're gonna do is you're gonna take your stem assembly, which also has two matching holes on either side. Show you that. You're gonna line those up. You know, the petal and the nut and all that stuff is gonna be facing you and the clematis flower. And then the, so the clematis on the dry wheel should be facing away. So anyway, so you slide this down into the base and using, there's four JCB bolts for this assembly. And you're gonna take your Allen wrench, the one that has the nifty plastic handle, and you wanna align those holes which is a little tricky because it's so heavy and hard to shift it. I think I've got them aligned. Yeah, you can feel it when it catches. It starts to thread, so that's good. This one's being a little bit of a stinker. So he's in there. It should thread easily. If it's threading hard, you're probably not aligned correctly. And this one, I noticed the, the wrench they gave me, the handle is a little bit wide, so it's bumping up against the treadle. I'm not thrilled about, but it's not going to hurt anything as far as I can see. Okay, now we're going to set it up and do the same on the other side. You would think they would automatically line up, but that is not the case. That one did. This one looks a little bit offset. Nope. Gonna go in perfectly. <laughs> I like the head of the JCB bolt to be flush with the surface of the wood. thing we're going to do is we're going to install the spinning head. So I'm going to loosen my nut and I'm going to put the stem upright. Now the, the feature about this wheel that allows you to have a variety of different heads is the fact that there's these two pieces of wood here and your head goes in between here. Whether it's the overdrive head, the high speed head, or just your standard head. So you're going to loosen this JCB bolt. 
pull that out and there's a little wooden spacer that's going to come out as well. Now we're going to get our spinning head. This is the standard head. Now you're going to be sitting over here and you're going to be putting your bobbins on and off here so it goes this, this way. And then you can decide, depending on your preference, right-handed, left-handed, whatever, whether you want that flyer shaft to be on the right or the left. And on my rows, right now I have it on the right, so I'm gonna carry that on. And I like to push it down far enough so I can fit my finger between the spacer and the head. So I'm gonna put the spacer in between there. And you don't have to thread this in super tight. Great. Okay, so now we're gonna put on the whorl. And this is, there's four whorls for Magicraft. This is the Susie whorl. Um, the three others you can use, you know, if you want to change up your ratios at all, that's an option. You're going to want to look for the flat spot on your shaft. It's showing it here. There it is right there. A little flat. When you find that, it's really easy to see. It's like a three quarters of an inch long, so it's, it's really easy to see. So you're gonna slide your whorl on and make that grub screw, which is right here. You want that grub screw to line up with the flat. So kind of eyeball, make sure that your whorl is lined up with the grooves because you got five grooves on the whorl and five grooves on your drive wheel. Make sure they're pretty well lined up. And then go ahead and tighten. I just feel very wiggly when I'm doing this. All right, make sure that's nice and snug. Now you're gonna put on your drive band. This drive band is actually can be used on a Pioneer, Susie, and the Aura. Okay, perfect. Okay, next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna assemble, we're gonna put the crank assembly on with the con rods. Now, when you look at the wheel, there are three screw holes. Two of them are close together and one is kind of off by itself. When you look at your crank assembly, it also has three holes, two close together and one on its own. So if you figure that out, that that's how you're gonna configure that. There's three of these bolts. They have a flat base and a flat head. That's what you're gonna attach it with. And we're gonna use this ever so slightly larger Allen wrench for this piece. It's easiest if you get them all three started. Oops. And then tighten them. Okay, I got them all in there. Thread it in. Now I'm going to tighten them. If 
I'm gonna go back to the whorl for a second. If you do decide you wanna get a different size whorl, they're all made the same way. They all have a grub screw in them so you don't have to take it out or save it or whatever. I was doing that in the beginning before I realized. And um, just loosen the grub screw and install the other one. It's really simple. With my wheel, my rose, I had it for 20 years before I attempted to change the whorl, so it put up quite a fight. <laughs> it took me a long time to get it off, and I really had to torque it pretty hard. I was afraid I was going to wreck it, but it ended up coming eventually. So I guess I would say you may want to maybe once a year or so take it off, try and um, clean it a little bit so that it's easier to take off when you actually do want to take it off. Okay, so let's install the con rods now, which I'm going to just take a quick look at the manual because this part is very important that you get these installed correctly. As you're facing the um, crank assembly, the pedal on your left will go with the con rod that is at the end of this curved piece here. I'll show you that again. So pretend I'm facing this. This what, the pedal on my left is going to get attached to the con rod that's on this little arm piece here. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and do that. And this is where you need your Phillips head screwdriver. There's uh, wood screws already inserted in here. So I'm going to pull them out just enough so that I can slide the rubber joiner in there. And I want to have the joiner just come out from the pedal a little tiny bit. And then what I'm what we're going to do is we're going to be screwing the screw right through the rubber to hold it in. Now, sometimes my rubber joiners are squeaky, and I saw, I don't know what it was, a live feed or something with Glenis Pode, and she said if you dipped some talcum powder in there, that takes care of that squeaky sound. So I have it on my grocery list for tomorrow if you get some talcum powder, just in case. I doubt that it's gonna have an issue, but if it does, I'll have the necessary materials. Just take the second one. So you also wanna make sure before you put it in that it's rubber feet are very solid. You want to make sure you've got it um, perfectly straight, uh, you know, on a 90 degree angle, not tilted one way or the other when you put that rubber joiner in your pedal. So it clearly says it in the manual. Just make sure that it's very straight when you put the joiner in your pedal and not crooked. That looks good to me. So the last thing we need to install is the bobbin and the flyer. Now, those go on the sh flyer shaft here. One thing I'm gonna do is just dab a tiny little amount of Vaseline. I and mean, you can barely even see that on there. Do not take a big, huge glob and just ever so gently apply that to the flyer shaft. I'm gonna take the bobbin that actually already has the leader on it because um, every wheel is tested at the factory. So this is the wheel that they use to spin with. The bobbin, I mean, that they use to spin it with. If your bobbin doesn't go on nicely, run it against the threads a little because there might be some burrs in there or something. The 
this is going on just fine. Good. I'm going to take my Delta flyer and thread that on. Give it a little tighten. There, so that's on. And then I'm going to put the tension cord over the brake groove on the bobbin. It's, it's set up right now with a S configuration, figure eight, which is good because that's how I like to spin my singles. Now with the Susie, there are these two holes here on this little table or whatever. And you put these little bars here, and this is where you hold your extra bobbins. And it's not a lazy Kate. It wasn't designed to be a lazy Kate, but I know people that have made taken advantage of that and used it as a lazy Kate. So if you feel ingenious and clever, go ahead and give it a try. But know that that's not really what the design is. So there it is. There's our gorgeous Susie wheel. She's got some heft to her. And uh, like I was saying before, you loosen this nut, we can spin this side, we can spin over here, we can turn it all the way. And thanks to that stop that we installed, it's not going to smash the head. I'll turn this around so you can see that. It's not going to smash the head into this pedal here because it's they've put that little stop in there good thing so yeah there she is just gorgeous